Hey everybody, welcome to PC Perspective. I'm Ryan Shrout. Today we're here to talk to you about the new Intel Compute Stick. This tiny little thing right here, this is actually a computer and HDMI connection all built into one little device. If you remember back at CES in January of this year, we met with Intel and we actually talked about the Compute Stick for the first time. And what you're looking at here is basically something that looks like an oversized USB thumb drive, when in fact, this is not a USB connection, it's an HDMI connection. And inside this, you have a full Bay Trail powered computer. That's right, you've got a, uh, it's an Intel Atom Z3735F processor. That's a quad core processor, no hyper threading, uh, with a base clock of 1.33 gigahertz and a top boost clock of 1.83 gigahertz. There's two gigs of RAM. 32 gigs of eMMC storage. Uh, and that's kind of like your basic specifications. You're basically looking at what would be the internals of a Baytrail powered tablet that has been around for a, the last year or so. But now it's kind of all jammed into this little compute stick, as they say. Now a quick walk around the device will show some of the connections. Obviously the most important one here is you actually have your HDMI connection. So this will plug into your TV, plug into a monitor and display that has an HDMI port on there. Um, if you're worried about the crowding of the HDMI port, Intel is including a essentially a port saver or an extension that you plug into the HDMI port here and then uh, you actually just plug this part into your TV so that you've got uh, enough space there if crowding is an issue for you. Uh, you also have a micro SD card slot here for storage expansion. I think it supports up to 128 gigs. On the other side, you have a full-size USB 2.0 port, which can be used for accessories, a webcam, any kind of external audio devices if you want anything like that. And then there's a micro SD, or I'm sorry, micro USB port for charging. All right, this is actually, this does require external power. We're not gonna get into the whole idea of MHL and HDMI power. None of that really exists yet. So you will need a USB power through this. Now, if, you're mo if your monitor or your TV has a USB port on it, chances are you can use that and uh, they supply you with the full size to micro USB cable here and you can actually power it that way. If, they, if your TV doesn't have that, they do give you a little five volt power brick as well. So you do require some external power for that. And then you've got your power button on there, obviously to turn on and off the device. This is going to be something that's usually gonna be on the majority of the time anyway. Now that Atom processor here has an SDP, which is a kind of scenario design power of about 2.2 watts. And although Intel doesn't list it, you can expect the TDP, the thermal design limit to be at around five watts, but don't expect it to get up to that very often. Other internal important specifications to look at here is because you've only got one USB port, you know, you've got a connected keyboard and mouse. So this is actually a full computer. Bluetooth is included in this. You also have 802.11n wireless. Uh, so you don't have to worry about hardwired uh, internet connections if you don't want to. Um, now, also important to note here is that this version, the one we're looking at here, the, let me get, read the specific model number here. Uh, the STCK1A32WFC includes Windows 8.1 with Bing. So it's a $150 price tag. You get the compute stick, you get the accessories that we're kind of showing you here, and you get Windows 8.1 with Bing, which is really just standard Windows 8.1 where the default operating system settings are for your search engine to be Bing. So you can still actually go in and change that to Google or whatever you want. You can still install Google Chrome or uh, Mozilla Firefox. There's no real restrictions there. It's just kind of the default out of the box experience with that. And that's uh, something that Microsoft only allows systems, I believe under $300 to take advantage of. So it's pretty neat that for $150, you get the full computing hardware as well as the operating system uh, to base it on. Now in terms of performance, you're gonna be a little bit limited here. There's no getting around that, right? It is a Bay Trail powered device, but even uh, compared to some of the tablets that are out there, this implementation of Baytrail is gonna be slower than that because you are more thermally constrained by, you know, basically you can see there's not a whole lot of room for dissipation here. There's no fans or anything. Everything is completely passive. Um, performance wise, you're looking at really maybe 75% of one of the high-end Baytrail tablets performance, right? So it gives you an idea of what to expect. Uh, for example, uh, if you look at something like Cinebench 11, one of our classic CPU performance tests, you're uh, looking at about half of the performance 
of the first generation of Core M processors that are based on Broadwell. They're out there and shipping now, so you're looking at about half the total performance there. And if you look at you know, 3D graphics performance, if you're interested in that, again, it's about half, just a little bit more than half of the Core M processors that are out there today. This isn't gonna win benchmarks. You're not gonna run uh, 3D rendering applications on this, at least if you have uh, very little patience like I do. I wouldn't recommend doing any of those things. You have the capability to do it if you have to, but, but you probably shouldn't. The real use cases for the Intel Compute Stick are uh, for either, you know, you've got productivity devices. So if you, if you need a PC for yourself or for mom or dad or sister or somebody that doesn't need to have a lot of performance, they're gonna do web browsing, they're gonna check their email, play some online like casino games or something like that. Uh, if you're gonna do basic office applications, you, know, you can use Excel, you can use Word, don't use giant Excel sheets, but you can do that. This will be able to handle all of that uh, as well, right? Um, as long as you install the correct applications for that or use online Google apps or something. Uh, for home theater devices this and kind of media consumption, this is really, I think, one of the primary targets. Uh, we tested a, a wide range of online streaming services, including Amazon and YouTube and Netflix uh, and Plex, and all of those services actually ran pretty well on this device. YouTube, we kind of peaked out at 1080p content. At 1080p, we were probably running in the 70 to 80% CPU utilization. So going up to 4K is obviously not going to work and this HDMI port doesn't really support 4K. Uh, I guess it will support 4K 30. Um, but obviously that's not kind of the experience you want there. But I was able to play Netflix movies without an issue. We were able to stream from a Plex server without any issue. Amazon's was fine. Uh, and you can use all this through the web browser, through native applications, because again, you are working with a, a full Windows operating system. Um, another option is Steam in-home game streaming. We actually did, did get that to work, although it was a little bit of a struggle. It has 802.11n, kind of peaks at 54 megabits per second, uh, in our testing, we kind of got it up to about 40 megabits per second, so pretty close up to, to the peak. But it wasn't up to streaming 1080p uh, uh, games across our network. You really need either a USB to hardwired Ethernet controller uh, adapter, or you can, seems kind of weird, but you could install another like wireless stick off of this USB port and run uh, an 802.11 AC adapter if you wanted to. Again, these are kind of use cases that are a little bit outside the norm. Uh, but are available if you're looking for something interesting and, and creative to do with it. Uh, we, we did play like Super Meat Boy and some of those other basic Steam games would work just fine on this though. So if you hook this up to your TV and you want to do it for, you know, for multimedia streaming, you can play some basic, some basic games on the compute stick if you want. Uh, the other option really is, you know, as a full computer for a point of sale system, if you're in a business environment, you run a lot of PCs that don't have high uh, compute requirements for what they're doing. You're basically using some, some web browser based applications so some very low end applications. This would be useful for that. So th there are, there's a lot of flexibility with this device. The primary uh, drawback to it, even in the multimedia and home theater realm is that it comes with Windows 8.1 that doesn't really have a useful or intuitive 10 foot interface. So if you're, if you're sitting on your couch and you're using a Bluetooth mouse and keyboard, uh, or you're use, utilizing the one USB port for like a nano receiver from Logitech, then you're basically using a mouse and keyboard with a monitor that is fairly far away. Now that could be a pretty good experience for some things. You know, you want to sit on your couch and you want to browse the internet and do some searches and look up YouTube videos. You can absolutely do that. Um, but unlike Plex or what you get with like an Xbox or something, you don't have this kind of easy remote control interface. You don't have uh, a default out of the box capability to interface with the machine that way. I think that would be a big advantage that you plug this in, you kind of get uh, some version of the Windows Media Center that kind of still exists, but in this platform, I think it would be fairly difficult for you to integrate with it. So uh, I, I actually like this device. I think that Plugging this into a TV, say in our office or at your house and making it uh, a streaming deadhead, if you will, for a Plex server or for Steam in-home streaming. Um, there's some things you've got to work around to get some of that to work. Uh, I think the idea of hooking up an ethernet port to this seems a little crazy, seems a little a bit of defeating the point of uh, getting all of this kind of in a wireless form factor as possible. But for $150 to get all this hardware, the connectivity options, 
the Windows installation uh, pre-installed on this. I think it's actually a pretty good deal for people that are looking for an interesting or creative way to implement uh, a PC into some kind of environment that they don't have yet. And for those of you interested, there is going to be a Linux version of this shipping a little bit later that will be $110. It only have, uh, I believe, eight gigs of storage instead of 32 gigs of storage included on there. Uh, but you'll be able to do that for a little bit less money. Now the Intel Compute Stick will be 150 bucks. I think it ships in early May. So we're gonna mess around with this some more, come up with some ideas, you know, buy a new TV, plug this in, what's your kind of experience with it? Something like that, right? Um, I, it's an interesting transition for Intel to go from making desktop motherboards, to building the Nook, to now building the Compute Stick, which is basically taking that same idea and compressing it even down a little bit further. Uh, make sure you go to PCPer.com, check out the full review. I'll have more write-up uh, description, a little bit of benchmarks, but again, that's not really the focus of this device. And some ideas about what our use cases are and utilizing uh, the different multimedia applications that you can with uh, the Intel Compute Stick. Thanks guys, see you next time.